Number 14. Calculate the maximum acceleration of a car that is headed up a 4 degrees slope, one that makes an angle of 4 degrees with the horizontal, under the following road conditions. Assume that only half of the weight of the car is supported by the two drive wheels and that the coefficient of static friction is involved. That is, the tires are not allowed to slip during the acceleration. Ignore any rolling. For letter A, we got to do it on dry concrete. All right. So um, there's a few parts of this problem. We've got to be very careful with what we're calculating or right, how we're dealing with this. So not hard, but just we have to be careful. So first thing is uh, we're trying to find right a maximum acceleration. So just think about this. We're talking about forces here, right? Um, so what formula are we eventually going to be thinking about using? We're going to be using the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to max in order to find that acceleration. So in order to find the acceleration, I need to know the mass, but they don't tell that to me, so most likely it should cancel somehow. And then I need to really know the sum of the forces in the x direction for this particular problem. So I need a free body diagram, all right? So uh, let's come, we'll come back to that formula, but I'm just setting up the thought process. So now what I need to do is I need to create a free body diagram that details this picture. But there's really two things I have to detail. All right, because if we think about the problem, there's a couple of forces that are involved. There's frictional forces, right? And then there's weight forces, okay? So first, let's talk about the frictional force. Now, they said that half of the weight of the car is supported by the two drive wheels. So let's just assume these are the two drive wheels that are driving the car, all right? Now, in terms of accelerating a car, these are the two wheels in which friction is at play. Not these, because they are not driving the vehicle. They're not the ones actively turning by the engine. All right, so it's just these that I'm concerned about, let's say. So what I'm gonna do here is let me just draw, just to keep it at the same angle, I'm gonna draw, so just pretend that uh, this represents two wheels. All right, one, one is behind the other. All right, what I wanna do here is I wanna create a free body diagram that details what's going on at this level, at the level of where the wheel meets the surface, okay? So let's think about it. So let's draw our coordinate system. Let me draw it a little straighter. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and rotate it like we normally do. I'm gonna bring it over, okay? And then I'm gonna rotate it now counterclockwise by exactly four degrees. Why? Because that is the angle of the incline. All right, so it's exactly four degrees. I'm gonna line it up just like this, okay? So now, let's calculate. So remember, the frictional forces are the forces occurring at the two drive wheels. That's what's important. And remember that in order to calculate frictional forces, look at the right-hand side over here. We got to know. We have to know the normal force involved. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, remember that these two wheels are supporting half of the weight. So I have a weight vector. Uh, let me. Make that a little better. There we go. I have a weight vector pointing directly down, correct? Perpendicular to the horizontal down here. Now this is not W, it's half of W or W over two. Why? Because I'm just detailing the drive wheels. And remember it said half of the weight of the car is supported by the two, uh, by the two drive wheels. All right, that takes care of that. What's the angle in here, guys? Remember the angle's gonna equal I didn't even give you a chance to respond there, <laughs> but the angle is going to be equal to four degrees. Okay, so I'm going to write a little four degree. All right. And if we notice, we can now create a component um, triangle in there, right, for X and Y components. So why don't we do that? Oops. So let's do, here's the X component. No, what am I talking about? That's the Y. Sorry, that's the Y component. Okay, so I'll call that negative W sub Y. And then what would the X component of that vector look like? It would look just like that, right? So here we go. So that represents now negative W sub X because we're trying to think about how this car is accelerating upwards. So anything now that lies to the left here, that lies to the left of the Y axis is going to be negative. Okay, wonderful. Let's keep setting up the diagram now. This is great, but the normal force here will now be acting straight up, right? And the normal force directly um, opposes the weight vector in the y direction. So I can say this now that the normal force is equal to, just call it the absolute value, all right? It's gotta be positive because it's pointing in the positive y direction. So it's w sub y, all right? 
Okay, so it looks like we have everything fairly uh, detailed fairly well here. So um, let's try to see if we can now develop a formula that deals with the force of static friction here. So let me start with the formula over here on the right hand side. The force of the force of static friction should be less than or equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Okay, great. Now, what I can do is instead of writing normal force here, I can write my W sub Y. All right, so I can rewrite this and say the, norm, the force of static friction should be less than or equal to my coefficient of static friction multiplied by my Y component of the weight. Now here's the thing. I'm not gonna stop here with this, just this substitution, Y, because remember, I have this formula to take care of. F, some of the forces in the X is equal to MAX. And what I need to do is somehow cancel the M eventually. So I realize that, well, W sub Y, I can't break that up into MG because this is a Y component of the weight. I have to get the actual weight, just W, meaning just this term on in, just this hypotenuse on into my formula. So now I'm gonna keep, I gotta figure out another substitution to do, all right? So I need to figure out a relationship between the hypotenuse of this triangle down here and this adjacent side to the angle that I know. Oh, I just told you basically, right, cosine. So we're gonna have cosine of that angle is gonna be equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the cosine, cosine of four degrees, right, will be equal to the opposite side. Oh, excuse me, what a, what a silly mistake. Cosine is adjacent, ladies and gentlemen. I know that's what you're probably telling me. Andrew, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. I know, I know, I made a mistake. I apologize. So the adjacent side here is negative W sub Y over the hypotenuse, which was W over two, all right? So solve this thing for this now. So I'm gonna distribute the negative. So W sub Y is equal to uh, negative W cosine of four all over two. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take this value and plug it in for my W sub Y here, but just remember, I have to take the absolute value of it, right? I, I gotta make it positive because the normal force is pointing up. So now my formula becomes, uh, the force of static friction is less than or equal to uh, the coefficient of static friction multiplied by W cosine of four all over two. Okay, now, where is that vector in my diagram here? Well, the vector in this diagram, well, we gotta think about this, all right? Why? You might say, well, force of friction always opposes the motion, so therefore it's gonna be pointing backwards. Well, yes, but we gotta think very carefully about what's going on, all right? So watch, I'm gonna create, uh, probably I'll create it up here on the upper left. So here's, here's the uh, plane, right? The, we have a six degree angle and here's the wheel. Okay, so let's draw the wheel. There we go. Now what's exactly happening? Remember, the wheel is rotating, right? The wheel is looking to turn around clockwise like this so that it can roll and propel the car forward. Well, but how is it propelling the car forward exactly? As the wheel rotates, right, look at it down here. Actually, you know what? Let me just bring this wheel up a little bit off the ground, okay? Pretend it's in contact though, but I want to I want to draw my vector. I want to draw an arrow in there So as the wheel is rotating clockwise, all right, it is literally pushing Against the road backward Right It's literally pushing the road back. It's like pushing the earth back Okay, and now according to Newton's third law if the wheel is exerting a force on The road in that direction then guess what the road is doing? The road is exerting a force equal but opposite in the opposite direction, right? So that's the force we're concerned about. Yes, I found this, this, this force that's going on in here before the wheel starts to slip, but I'm concerned about forces on the wheel, not by the wheel. So what I, what I want to know is this force here propelling and pushing the car forward, all right? And that is equal but opposite to what we just found, which is basically the frictional force pointing back, all right? So, yes, this is the frictional force, but it actually also is the applied force in this problem. That, this, is the, this is the force applied by the road to the car. So where do we draw that now in the picture? Well, that looks like we draw it here, 
right? It's going to be in the positive x direction. So that's the force applied, all right? So what I'm going to do here is just simply substitute force applied. And instead of saying less than or equal to now, I'm just going to write equal to because they're asking us for the max, okay? So the value here can be anything less than or equal to this number. So if I just say it should be equal to it, that would be the maximum number. So mu sub s times w cosine of 4 all over 2. All right, so now we got the applied force, all right, that force in that uh, particular direction. Now, this is all well and good. Now what I need to do, though, is I need to now figure out what's the weight component to this object. Okay, well, you might say, well, wait a minute, here's the weight component. That not that it? Well, that's only half the story because I only talked about the front two wheels. Remember, the whole weight of this car will be impeding the motion going up. So I have to look at the whole system here in order to find out my W sub X. What you could do is you could just look at this one and multiply it by two. That's not a problem. I don't have an issue with that by any means. Instead, what I'm gonna do because the pictures, well, eh, do I wanna draw another picture? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll just draw another, I'll just draw another coordinate, okay? But you could literally just find that negative W sub X and multiply it by two, all right? Because it's half, it's as we notice here, it's half of the uh, weight, all right? So another coordinate system, very quickly. Let me get this guy going, resize it. I'm gonna bring it on up and rotate it again, okay? And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring it up a little bit so it's not, you know, overlapping my other, um, my other uh, coordinate. <clears throat> This might get a little messy, actually, now that I'm looking at it. So uh, let me, mm, sorry, guys, just give me one second. I'm going to keep this, um, I'm going to keep this coordinate at this, on uh, in this plane. I'm just going to bring it down here, and then I'm just going to slide it on over, right over here. Okay, so, just, eh, no, I'm going to slide it right here. So. <laughs> I'm just trying to think ahead because I know there's a lot of work coming. So uh, this point now will represent the whole vehicle. Now the whole vehicle has a certain weight and it's pointing straight down, right? So this doesn't change. Now this is W instead of half, all right? Because I'm talking now about the whole car. This again is my four degree angle. And what I'm concerned about is I am concerned about, hold on, let me try to extend that, uh, this down a little bit. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. Yeah, that's good enough. What I'm concerned about is the X component of that vector. Okay, so I'm really concerned about this component that I just drew right here. Okay, I'm really concerned about that. Um, so how do I, let's call this now W sub X. Don't confuse these two. This is half. This is really half of the overall W sub X that I'm talking about over here. Okay, all right. So um, now, how do I find this knowing the triangle that I, the terrible triangle I just created? Um, I would do it by using sine, right? So I got sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So I got sine of four degrees will be equal to W sub X, W sub X all over uh, W, and then W sub X will equal W sine of four. Now remember, this thing is negative. It's in the negative X direction. Therefore, that's negative, okay? So now I found the X component of the weight, of the whole total weight, okay? Now, we got everything we need, thank God. Now we can go back to this formula, the sum of the forces in the x direction are equal to mAx. And now I can start plugging stuff in, all right? So let me just expand on the sum of the forces in the x direction. What are the important forces in the x direction? Well, it's going to be the applied force that I found here before, right? It's gonna be this thing, okay? And that's positive because it's pointing to the right. So that's Fa. And then there is a negative weight component, right? To the this whole vehicle, right? If I had my coordinate system, the weight would have been pointing here. And then there's a negative X component to that. Okay, and that's what I just found down here at the bottom. So now I'm gonna say minus W sub X, that should equal MAX. Good, now let's do some substitutions. Plug this thing in for F sub A. So we get mu sub S times W cosine of four all over two minus, then plug this in, all right? But I already have a minus sign in there already. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna put another negative in there because again, that would give me a 
double negative. It, it has to be negative overall, right? Because it's pointing in the opposite direction. So this is just minus now um, w minus w sine of four. W sine of four is equal to then <clears throat> is equal to then m a x. All right. So now why don't we do this? Let's pull out the w, right? There's a common term w between these two. So I'm going to write w now. And this becomes mu sub s cosine of 4, cosine of 4, all over 2 minus sine of 4 equals max. Expand on the w. Remember, w is equal to mg. So I'm just going to write mg now. Mu sub s cosine of 4 is all over 2, all over two minus sine of 4. And that is equal to max. And why did I do that? Because I realized that I got to get rid of the m. Remember, here it is. I finally got a. I finally was able to get rid of it. Now what are we going to do? Here's our formula, and now we can finally solve. So mu sub s cosine of four all over two minus sine of four is equal to ax. So what's the only variable in this problem that's going to change? Mu sub s. Okay, and that's why we have a, b, and c. So. Let's go over here. For letter A, I'm going to put it uh, all the way at the top. For letter A, mu sub s, I will be using on dry concrete. Go to your table. Here's rubber on dry concrete, and mu sub s is 1. So this is going to be 1.0. Now, when I go down to the bottom of the page, when I plug in uh, mu sub s is equal to uh, 1.0, excuse me, into this formula here, what do we get? No, oh, just calculate it. All right, so we get... Uh, 1 times cosine of 4, divide that by 2, then minus sine of 4 from that, and then multiply that by 9.8, and look at what we get. We get 4.20. Okay, so here now, a sub x will be equal to 4.20 meters per second squared. That's letter A. Now, let's move on to letter B. Uh, letter B says on wet concrete. All right, so uh, rubber on wet concrete now is 0.7. So for letter B, let's do this. For letter B, I was using mu sub s is equal to 0.7. Do the same thing, all right? Do 0.7 times cosine of 4. Divide that by 2. Subtract out sine of 4. And then multiply that by 9.8. And we get 2.3, uh, excuse me, 2.74. So we get a sub x is equal to 2.74 meters per second squared. And now, last but not least, letter C. And letter C, it tells us on ice, assuming that mu sub s is 0.1, so nothing to look up. They told it to us. Mu sub s is equal to 0 0.100. So take that now and plug it into your equation at the bottom. And what do we get? So we get 0.1 times cosine of 4. Divide that by 2. Subtract then the sine of 4. And then multiply that by 9.8. And, uh-oh. No, you didn't make a mistake. That is not a mistake. Well, it might have been a mistake to travel up the incline with ice on it. That was the mistake, right? One point, uh, so it's 0.195 meters per second squared. What is that negative sign telling you guys? That negative sign is telling you, you in trouble. Right? Because... <laughs> Because you're going to be going backwards. All right. So you're accelerating and speeding up on down the hill. And obviously, depending upon how long that hill is, will depend on what your final speed is at the bottom. So anyway. All right, guys. So the important formula is down here on the uh, right-hand side. I'm just going to box that in. All right. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please show your enjoyment by uh, possibly subscribing. That would be great. And um, I look forward to helping you in the next video. Thank you guys so very much.